welcome back to the show. There's a lot on my mind right now. Politically, yes, but also, more importantly, the second season of Bridgerton. Somehow, they pulled off the horniest season of television I've ever seen, while also showing an adult man repeatedly sniff the person he loves. Sniffing is usually the grossest thing you can do to another person. But on the subject of very gross things... Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has sent out a campaign email calling for the state to replicate Florida's controversial don't say gay law. So Ohio now making national headlines as two state lawmakers introduce a bill mirroring a controversial Florida law restricting how schools talk about sexual orientation and gender identity. Ohio is a lot more like Florida than you think. They even share manatees. Unfortunately, Ohio was treating those young manatees for alcoholism. Damn, those Florida sandbars, they never check ID. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the OG, or originally gay bashing bill, into law last week. The parental rights and education bill limits instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity for students in kindergarten through third grade. This is in Florida and other places school for very young kids, the gender bread man. So this is trying to sow doubt about kids, about their gender identity. It's trying to say that, you know, they could be uh, whatever they want to be. Uh, this is inappropriate. Sorry, I'm stuck on Ron DeSantis saying kids can't be whatever they want to be. I wish someone had told him that so he wouldn't be about to run for president. In addition to being vague and subject to interpretation, Florida's don't say gay law is blatantly homophobic. It bans instruction of gender identity and sexual orientation, which could mean eliminating books with LGBTQ characters or historical figures. It also bans classroom discussion, which is so broad it could keep a teacher from referring to gay families, even in classes where some students have gay parents. I have a little girl this year who has two moms, and the kids are curious about her two moms. They're going to come to me. I am afraid uh, for myself, my colleagues, and my students. Teachers shouldn't be banned from talking about a child's two moms any more than they should be banned from talking about my two dads. Some say this was Paul Reiser's best work. Not anyone I know, but somebody. And now it's clear that Don't Say Gay exists for an even more homophobic reason. The spokesperson for Governor Ron DeSantis, however, on her personal Twitter account, has called it something very different, the anti-grooming bill. There is an assertion that LGBTQ people simply by existing are a threat to children. That is bigotry. It's at the core of this bill. Of course, bigotry is at the heart of this. I don't even know why they try to hide it. Marjorie Taylor Greene pledged to introduce a national version of the law by declaring she would do anything I can to protect kids off Marjorie Taylor Greene. Do you know how hard it is to be the worst f***ing person on earth that does CrossFit? It's an achievement. You don't give a shit about protecting kids. If the way you stopped Parkland survivor David Hogg is any indication, we need to protect kids from you. It is incredibly dangerous to paint LGBTQ people as threatening to children just for existing. Our society already makes it difficult for them to live their lives. 20% of hate crime victims were targeted because of their sexual orientation. And last year, 42% of LGBTQ youth seriously considered attempting suicide. These are very real people whose lives are going to be destroyed by this law. The conservative tactic of weaponizing gender identity and sexual orientation to make people seem threatening, of course, is not new. Just like Pet Rocks and Henry Kissinger, the myth that LGBTQ teachers want to groom kids or turn them gay is just another piece of garbage from the 1970s. Once upon a time, in 1977, there was a Christian singer and spokeswoman for the Florida Citrus Commission named Anita Bryant. But instead of writing hit songs about oranges and Jesus's love, Bryant was a hateful bigot who lobbied for the repeal of a Miami ordinance barring anti-gay discrimination. Bryant argued it would allow homosexuals to provide role models for the impressionable and enable homosexuals to recruit youths. Bryant's homophobia soon inspired California State Senator John Briggs to marginalize LGBTQ educators. The Briggs Initiative was a measure on the 78 ballot of California that would have outlawed, first of all, hiring uh, gays and lesbians to teach in the public schools. This proposition is a referendum statewide on the rights of parents. What it does do is give school boards new authority to uh, remove from the classroom a teacher 
who is pushing homosexuality? What about teachers who push heterosexuality? I had a teacher who said cool beans all the time. He indoctrinated me to say cool beans. Cool beans. Oh. <sighs> Republicans have been running with this hypersexualized and homophobic excuse for crushing LGBTQ rights ever since. But the what about the children panic tactic isn't new either. It started way before QAnon with scare campaigns against everything from the dangers of young people reading novels to the satanic panic of the 1980s to the Santana panic of 1999. You weren't there. Suddenly, Every weatherman in America had the same joke. In some ways, it makes sense that conservatives addicted to fictional versions of real events would be totally fine manufacturing incidents of pedophilia. Republicans are far more sympathetic to fictional child victims than they are to actual victims. We can't let Republicans get away with perpetuating these disgusting lies that smear the LGBTQ plus community and put a target on their backs. And in the case of the state representative who introduced Ohio's own version of the Don't Say Gay bill, I literally mean, we can't let her get away. I've got to go to the Senate. Please don't, don't harass me. Oh, so inspiring to see and hear Republicans run away from taking any accountability for their shit ideas. The GOP sees targeting LGBTQ people as a winning strategy for the midterms, but we cannot let them win. And we especially can't let them pass even more restrictive anti-gay laws in the future. We'll be right back. <laughs> 